Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, if you're a guest or a visitor, we welcome you. I am Bill Klopp, one of the staff elders, and along with Mike Butcher, who helps us out, <clears throat> will be doing readings for us this morning. Um, Pastor Ryan is in Houston with the youth group. He'll be back the 16th, and uh, the youth group will be returning next weekend sometime. Also, Pastor Stoker, who was here a couple weeks, got hurt pretty bad, so he isn't able to be with us, but he's alive and well, thankfully. So he did send his message so right, after the, right after that, and we'll have announcements at the end of the service. There is no communion this morning either. Well, today's theme is Go and Do Likewise, Living and Loving in the Kingdom of Jesus. As we gather, our gracious God gathers us together in his house today. We are blessed with another opportunity to be filled with his love. This love is the love that enables us to love. It all begins with God, who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. This love is found in Jesus, who in the great love offered him his life upon the cross for us. This love is poured out upon us when we, by the power of the Holy Spirit, believe in Christ as our Lord and Savior. It knows no limits because this doesn't stop when the service is over. No, our love for God continues when it is directed through us today as we gather to give thanks to the Father above who has transformed us into the kingdom of heaven of his beloved Son in a way we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins from Colossians 1, 13 to 14. Our opening hymn is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. You'll see it on screen or in our maroon hymnal found in the pew in front of you, number 803. Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join in in the confession and the absolution. You'll find it up on screen or in your bulletin. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. In silent prayer, we come before our merciful Lord for his healing forgiveness.
Holy God, you've commanded us. You should follow my rules and keep my statutes and walk in them. I am the Lord your God. Walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. As brothers and sisters in Christ, let us give thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transformed us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. As a called servant of Christ and by his authority, your sins are forgiven you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And rescued us from our foes, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of, to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. Thanks to the Lord, he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. In the peace and the love of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of love from above and for the salvation of all who trust in Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For his love to fill the whole world as the church of God walks in unity and proclaims the message of his kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our congregation, for its labors of love, and for all who offer in this holy place their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, heal, rescue, and redeem us, gracious God. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the hymn of praise, Lord of glory, you have bought us, number 851, in your ruined hymnal or on the screen. <coughs>
I invite you to rise for the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in your deep compassion, you deliver us from the domain of darkness and bring us into your eternal kingdom. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. I invite you to be seated for the Old Testament reading. The Old Testament reading in uh, Leviticus 19. When you reap the harvest of your land, you are not to reap the very edge of your field or gathering the gleamings of your harvest. Do not strip your vineyard bare or gather its fallen grapes. Leave them for the poor and the resident alien. I am the Lord your God. Do not steal. Do not act deceitfully deceitfully, or lie to one another. Do not swear faults by name, profaning the name of your God. I am the Lord. Do not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages due, a hired worker must not remain with you until morning. Do not curse the deal or put stumbling block in front of the blind, but you are to fear your God. I am the Lord. Do not act unjustly when deciding a case. Do not be partial to the poor or to give preference to the rich. Judge your neighbor fairly. Do not go about spreading slander among your people. Do not jeopardize your neighbor, neighbor's life. I am the Lord. Do not harbor hate, hatred against your brother. Rebuke your neighbors directly, and you will not incur guilt because of him. Do not take revenge or bear a grudge against members of your community, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Here's the reading. uh, This is the word of the Lord. And now we will, uh, if you join me in the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his holy Son, your Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died and was buried. He sent into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, and the gifts, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And now the Holy Gospel, uh, Luke chapter 10. Then an expert in the law stood up to test him, saying, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He asked him. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. You answered correctly, he told them. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify him, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus took up the question, and he said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to uh, Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him, beat him, and fled him, and fled, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the road And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite, when he arrived at the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan on his journey came up to him, and when he saw the man, he had compassion. He went over to him and bandaged his wounds, and pouring on olive oil and wine. Then he put him on the 
his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denaro and gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him. When I come back, I'll reimburse you for whatever you, whatever you spend. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The one who showed mercy to him, he said. Then Jesus told them, go and do the same. Now, uh, the hymn of the day, uh, you can be seated, we'll do the hymn of the day. Um, and you're at hymnal 845. Well, good morning, everyone. Pastor Todd Stocker here. Pastor Ryan is with a group at the National Youth Gathering uh, from your church, and I was to be there live, 
However, this past week I was road biking and a garbage truck turned into me. And guess who won that battle? <laughs> it wasn't me. Uh, at 15 miles an hour, I hit my brakes as hard as I could, which caused the back tire of my bike to shimmy. And I went down very, very hard, slid underneath the front end of the truck uh, and ended up on the pavement. I'd like to think it looked like a, a James Bond moment. Um, but I'm sure it was very less less stunning. So um, when I came to, there were three guys standing over me and wanting to make sure that I was okay and uh, helped me kind of get my get my bike together and get back up on my feet. Uh, one of the the three that stopped obviously was the driver of the truck. Anyway, three broken ribs later, I'm uh, pretty much homebound for the next few weeks. But uh, as I reflect on that event this past week, it occurs to me that there are some parallels to the gospel lesson that we had today of the Good Samaritan, someone who was wounded and someone who stopped to help. So I have a question to get us going this morning. Have you ever stopped to help someone? Maybe it was at an accident like I was involved in. Maybe it was somebody hurting in a, a different way, relationally, maybe somebody that you stopped and helped emotionally or maybe even spiritually. But what if it was someone that you didn't like and you were presented with that opportunity to help? What if it were someone you thought deserved what they had coming to them? Well, for me, and I'm sure in some way the same for you, loving and helping others is affected by something that we see in the Good Samaritan story, and it's this. It's easier to love those like me than those different from me. Isn't that true? It's easier to love people that share my beliefs, my values, and my worldview. It's easier to love them than people who don't share those things. People with whom you have a natural chemistry, it's easy to love. Like people in my family, people who don't make me angry, people who like 80s rock and roll, people who dress like me, talk like me, lean the same way politically like me, people who are Christian. We see this in every realm of life, don't we? It's easier to love people who are like us than people who are not like us. And I'm sure this is true with you also. I mean, we gravitate toward people like us, don't we? There are certain people at your work or in your community or even in your church that you avoid. The know-it-alls, the guy who's always late, the girl who complains. There are neighbors in your neighborhood that never mow their lawn or drink too much or have been divorced multiple times over or swear up a blue streak whenever, whenever anything goes wrong. They fix their cars in their driveway. I mean, the list goes on and on. So a key question for you and me today is, as we look at the Good Samaritan story, is how can we be the salt of the world when we don't even like the food we are seasoning? Well, there are a lot of questions that I, that I just threw out there for us. So I want to re-walk through the gospel lesson in Luke 10, uh, the Good Samaritan, and kind of get a background to what's going on and why Jesus told this story the way he told it. So um, kind of the context with this is uh, some of the teachers of the law, the religious leaders came to Jesus and said, what do we do to in inherit eternal life? And if you read behind the lines, it was more of a sarcastic, well, teacher, what must I do to inter inherit eternal life? And Jesus responds, love God, love others, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. And one of the teachers of the law said, well, who is my neighbor? Which launches Jesus into this amazing popular parable. So this is what Jesus says. And I'll just put this, the, uh, the verses back up on the screen. Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I read this story, before I really dug in and studied it, I'd always ask, how could these people... I know it's a parable, Jesus, but Jesus, how could these people be so cold? How could they just walk past this poor guy? 
Well, what you have to know is you have to know the context of what is this Jericho Road. Well, the road from Jerusalem to Jericho was notoriously dangerous road. It still is, actually. Jerusalem is 2,300 uh, feet above sea level. The Dead Sea, near where Jericho stood, is 1,300 feet below sea level. That means there's l that in less than 20 miles, this road drops 3,600 feet. It was a road of nary rock rocky cliffs and valleys and sudden switchbacks that made it just kind of what's called a happy hunting ground for robbers. Um, it's also, it was called the Red or Bloody Way due to the blood left over from so many robberies. So to travel alone on this road was not just foolish, but definite suicide. I mean, people seldom attempted the Jerusalem to Jericho Road alone. They never did, they rarely did it. They usually traveled in convoys. As late as the 19th century, it was still necessary to pay safety money to the local sheiks before you could even travel safely from Jerusalem to Jericho on that road. So when Jesus told this story, he was telling about the kind of thing that was constantly happening to ha happening on that road from Jerusalem to Jericho. So when he says, when he has, inserts this guy into the story, into the parable, this man had no one but himself to blame but the, for the plight in which he found himself. I mean, thinking, think about it. Think about walking alone at night in maybe East St. Louis or even uh, downtown Detroit or even parts of downtown Minneapolis. You just don't do it. And so when I read this story originally, I'm like, well, it serves that guy right. He knows better than to travel alone. But then Jesus says this, but a Samaritan, and the people in the crowd hearing the story would go, not a Samaritan, come on. Those people are corrupt, evil people. But Jesus says, no, no, a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him. Now, if you were in the crowd and hearing this parable from Jesus, you would see the religious leaders just be upset. Their reaction would have been, them are fighting words. Jesus is saying, not only don't you know what love is or how to love, but your enemy is showing you up in this critical area. I mean, the religious leaders were steaming. Nobody publicly ridicules the Pharisees, but Jesus did to make a point. And not only that, he kept going. He could have stopped at that last verse where he just took him to the end and everything's fine. But he says this, the next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. And when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. So in saying this, Jesus took away any excuses for being too busy. He took away my excuse. He took away your excuse for being too busy to love others and to help others. Loving his neighbor in the story didn't destroy his schedule. It added a dimension to it that expanded the Samaritan's opportunity to love. And then finishing up the story, classic Jesus, he looks deeply into the eyes of that religious leader and he asks a question. Which of these three people do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, well, the one who had mercy on him. And then Jesus says, go and do likewise. So what are we supposed to do with this Good Samaritan story? There's so many aspects we can go. Um, are, are we supposed to go find some guy beaten up on the road and take him to the hospital? Well, I don't know, maybe. But for us today, pursuing relationships with those who aren't Christian, Jesus' parable really gives us uh, four steps to actually seeking out those who may not know the love of Christ. So the first one could be this. And again, this isn't a formula. This isn't a law thing. This is just here are some ideas from this beautiful story of the Good Samaritan. The first one is this. I identify my neighbor. Who is a neighbor? Biblically, a neighbor was, wasn't just the person you live next to. 
you know, it, it's the people that you meet each day. Remember the Sesame Street song? Who are the people in your neighborhood? It, it's the people that you meet each day. And now you're singing that song, aren't you? <laughs> so mentally, it might be the waitress this afternoon if you go to a restaurant. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it actually is a, a neighbor you're going to meet, be meeting with this afternoon just to hang out. I love what the message paraphrase says in Matthew 10. And the message paraphrase isn't a translation. It's just a, more so a commentary on the, on the text. But it says, don't, be, don't begin by traveling to some far off place to convert unbelievers. And don't try and be dramatic in tackling some public enemy. Go to the lost, the confused people right here in the neighborhood. Tell them that the kingdom is here. Bring health to the sick. Touch the untouchables. Kick out the demons. You have been treated gener generously, so live generously. Don't think you have put on a fun you have to put on a fundraising campaign before you start. You don't need a lot of equipment. You are the equipment. Isn't that great? So remember, you can identify first who are your neighbors. And simply, it's everybody that you come in contact with every day. Second idea from the Good Samaritan story is this. I get close to them. Remember, the Samaritan, he didn't walk on the other side of the road, right? He went to, the, uh, was on the same road, side of the road that the poor man was laying in. I heard of a guy who would actually back out, back his car out into the street to wash it. Not in the driveway, but out onto the street, on, onto the side of the street, so that... People driving by would make comments, hey, you can, can you wash mine? And he would strike up different conversations. Just be creative. Uh, get close to people who you are not connected to, um, who, uh, who aren't Christian. Now, as a pastor, oftentimes pastors don't mix really uh, a lot of times throughout the week with people who aren't uh, believers, who don't know who Jesus is. So we have to be very intentional about being in groups and clubs and different things so that we can have influence and share the love of Christ with people. I'm in a, a classic rock and roll band. I mean, we play all the classics, uh, Leonard Skinner, John Cougar Mellencamp, all those names. Uh, and one of the reasons is it's a lot of fun and I play the bass and so that, that's a, an easier instrument to play. But also it gets me connected with people who don't aren't necessarily church goers or Christ followers and I'm just loving on these guys and we have a good time building relationships. So again, I identify my neighbor, I get close to them. Uh, third one could be I bite my tongue, meaning you don't have to go in and condemn actions of people who don't believe in Jesus. That's not our calling. Our calling is just simply to represent Jesus to people. Go and make disciples of all nations, Jesus said. It doesn't say go and give them a Bible study they're never going to forget. That time will come. But people who don't know Jesus just want to know that you're authentic, that you don't have all the answers, and that you love them authentically. So the last one is this. I take care of their, their need. I mean, everybody wants to be valued. Everybody wants to make a difference. Everybody wants to be loved, right? And so you, you find out what their need is and if you can fulfill it or at least get somebody to help fulfill it, then you are showing Jesus to them. Now, if you look at the, those four, there isn't the go tell them about Jesus. You know, where is that? Um, where is that part? Well, oftentimes, if you don't have the gift of evangelism, simply being Jesus to them represents Christ to them, and the Holy Spirit opens up a door for which you can share about the hope that you have, the hope that I have, that only comes from Christ. And here's the motiv motivating factor that we can get from the Good Samaritan story. God loved me even when I didn't deserve it. When I was laying, laying on the pavement, I was completely helpless after my back bike accident. I couldn't do anything without the help of someone else. And again, that is our motivating factor for loving and helping others is that we, you and I, were helpless in our sin. But as Roman 5, 8 says, God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. So as you reflect on the unconditional love of the Good Samaritan, which mirrors God's unconditional love for you, 
Remember that you and I are, hel- are the helpless man on the road spiritually, but God stopped and loved us. Now we get the joy and privilege to do the same for others. Amen? Amen. Blessings on the rest of your worship. That was a wonderful message the pastor gave us this morning. This time we have our offertory. Not only do we give our tithes and offerings to help support God's work in his kingdom, we'd like you to think about during the offering the time and talents that you can give to help serve God's kingdom and this church, our offertory. I invite you to rise for the prayers of the church, please, if you are able. Fellow redeemed, we have been made holy by the blood of Jesus and have been called into his eternal kingdom. Let us lift our prayers before our holy Lord, trusting that he hears and answers us for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Holy God, our Father in heaven, we thank you for the mercy you've shown to us. We have not lived the lives of holiness. You require choosing to put ourselves first instead of fearing, loving, and trusting in you above all things. And yet you transfer the holiness of your Son to us as we trust in him as our Savior and Lord. Lord Jesus, you reign at the Father's right hand as King of kings and Lord of lords. As you minister to us now by your Holy Spirit, Working through the means you have established, your kingdom breaks into our world and touches our lives with your love. Gracious Father, you give the healing balm of your forgiveness to all who cling to your Son by faith. Bless those who stand in need of spiritual healing and all those who cry out for relief from their physical suffering especially for those we entrust who are recovering from surgeries who anticipate healing by God's grace. Jennifer, Marge, Eileen, Carol, Ron, Lindsay, Doug, and Mary. We continue to pray for our home-centered members, especially those who are shut in, for Marge and Harry and Harold, Muriel, Viv, Phyllis, and Lyle, and Rich. We pray for those of our youth and youth leaders who are away at Houston, praying that God would enrich their experience of all who are growing in their faith. Bless St. Luke's team and all others with fruitful learning, acts of service, and safe passage. We pray for those seeking cancer treatment, those who cope with chronic illness and pains, that God would grant us strength for each day and meantime relief. Remember Carol, Ann, Bill, Jean, Janine, Matthew, Daryl, Carmine, Tom, Ron, and Lois. We remember families in our midst who are mourning that God's comfort would light upon their hearts and keep them in the hope of everlasting peace. The Johnson family, the Rand family, the Mealy and the Bauman families, and the Berg family. We pray for protection among those who cope in the wake of natural disasters, disease, and duress and perhaps especially those victims and families coping in the wakes 
of the many mass shootings that have occurred recently. God, you continue to surround us with your loved ones and with the divine fence of your own holy protection, keeping sickness and violence scattered and at bay. Safeguard all nurses and emergency responders who see the joy of life and the pain of death on a daily basis. Rid the world of those things that plague us. Bring us out of the valley of shadows and our veil of tears to the light of the day that you have planned. And it will also guide and bless our southern states in the wake of storms. Continue to guide us as we serve our neighbors in the wake of flash, floods, and tornadoes. Safeguard all those who are evacuating in the midst of fire. Guard and keep all refugees who seek asylum. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan who face persecution and uncertainty as regimes change. Bless us to show the whole hospitality to those who are destitute and far from home. Lead us to honor the service of our active duty military and those who have served long for health and well-being of those in need around the world. Blessed Redeemer, you've rescued us from the domain of sin and death by your death upon the cross and resurrection from the grave. Satan stands defeated because you live and reign to all eternity. We give you all praise and glory for your work. You have done for what you have done to lead us away from temptation, to deliver us from evil one, and to transfer us to your eternal kingdom. By your grace through faith in you alone, we receive the gifts that you pour upon us as we stand in your holy presence. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and those for whom we pray. For yours alone is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And now I invite you to join me in the words that our Lord taught the disciples on the mountain when they asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we need those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and all your strength, and all your mind. And now I give to you the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you great peace. Amen. You can be seated for a moment, please. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Bonnie Klopp, my wife, the organist, who played for us today and for her old-time prelude this morning before worship. For Mike Butcher for helping out this morning with readings, and I enjoyed being with you this morning in light of what has happened this past week to our substitute pastor. Let's all please remember this guy in your prayers. He sure needs them. Uh, some of the announcements this week. As you know, Pastor Ryan's away with four chaperones and 12 of our high school kids. They'll be returning and hopefully have a joyful time and a safe return. They'll be late Thursday night coming home. Pastor will be back on Sunday for worship. Please keep in mind the wealth of other things around here. Look to your weekly page for different announcements. We're grateful for volunteers who are serving for the Fun Fest Parade today. And when you're out driving today, please be careful. There's going to be a lot of traffic with the Fun Fest Parades and detours and streets blocked off and things like that. All right. If you want to follow some of the happenings of the Youth Gathering, they're on Facebook and social media. Search for the National Youth Gathering 2022, and you'll see their site. You can scroll to the bottom, a link to social media. Also, on July 10th, next Sunday, join us after church downstairs in the Youth Room to discuss uh, needs for your volunteers and uh, decorating and set needs. Actually, that's today. We are collecting any large cardboard boxes you may have, and also pool noodles. Oh yeah, those big long round things, about that big round, and the kids play with them. That's okay. 
So uh, these will be used for making sets, so you will not get them back. Also, there's a big announcement about Vacation Bible School. It will be the 25th through the 29th from 5.30 to 7.30 for ages 4 to 11. Uh, we ask you that your kids are pre-registered, and we need a lot of volunteers to help out with different things. If you're willing to help, talk to Joanne Zuberver, please, or call 715-247-5747. Forty-seven, And I believe that's all our announcements. Thank you much. Our closing hymn is Lord Dismiss Us With Your Blessing on screen or 924 in your maroon hymnal. God bless. Have a safe week.